Enlisted Green Platoon or Enlisted Combat Skills is designed to both teach you and test you throughout the process. Historically, Green Platoon was a selection and training pipeline. It has transitioned to what would be more accurately described as a um, assessment and selection uh, training model. It essentially tests your ability to be trained, to be able to apply the task that you've been trained on in a stressful environment based on their performance, the RCSM can make the determination whether or not that soldier is fit for service in the regiment at the end of the course versus at the beginning of the course. So during the first week of enlisted combat skills, there is three to four days of psychological testing, security background checks, and they will do their Night Stalker fitness assessment during that time for us to really determine that we've got a suitable uh, soldier to put in training. The soldier's body must be fully extended in a straight arm position Elbows, trunk, and hips are straight. The Night Stalker Fitness Assessment is unique to this pipeline. It is not the ACFT, it is not the APFT. It is a series of events tailored to capture whether or not a soldier possesses the minimum level of fitness to safely train in Green Platoon. The soldier is actively training for the Army Combat Fitness Test, or the ACFT. They should generally possess the upper body attributes that we're looking to. The run is, however, a little bit longer. It's a four mile run versus a two mile run. So if the soldier knows they're on orders to attend Green Platoon, they should probably be running a little bit further than two miles for training. Those soldiers deemed not suitable to start training uh, based on just uh, you know various risk factors were dropped yesterday. This is the group that will actually make up the class. So this morning, they're kind of getting their introduction to the training standards here, uh, instill that initial level of motivation that we're gonna look for throughout the course. They will do some ruck layout drills throughout the day, because the expectation throughout the course is that they can meet certain time hacks when it comes to layout. Every item on their packing list is a needed event for an enduring field exercise. So we're gonna make sure that they have all that so they can be safe and comfortable while in the field environment. So the physical aspect today will typically go till about 1300 at the latest, with the last two hours being spent getting them changed into a clean uniform, getting some food in their stomach, and then turning them over to the committee leads for their first academic day, which will be tomorrow. Today is day three of land navigation training for the students. They are doing what we call buddy pinpoint. They're in buddy teams, kind of make up for each other's maybe lack of skills a little bit, maybe learn from each other. The points are in some pretty aggressive terrain here. It's, it's a very good example of what would be indicated on a map when you can look at it real world and start to assimilate those so that when you see slightly lesser evident uh, terrain features in, the, in a real environment, you're still able to recognize those indicators. We had five hours to get four out of six points. We plotted all of our points the day before. You, your first hour is in complete darkness. You can't see, you just have a red light lens. I so happened to go down the wrong road when I was handrailing and I got lost at one point, but I was able to use just cardinal direction and, until I found the gravel road. Hey, this is where I have to go. I'm gonna go straight through the woods. What I should probably do is I should be smarter about it, think where I am, use all the terrain features and follow them. Not have to use the compass all the time. There are going to be times when you're going to be out in the field and you're going to have no idea where you are. Like this morning, there was a couple points where I had no idea where I was. And it's very easy to say, okay, forget the point I'm looking for. But instead, I just kind of took a breath. I was like, all right, you know what? I'm unsure where I am, so let me find one of those terrain features or let me find two roads. And then I'm going to head back because now I can associate myself with where I am on my map. You, they'll be fine as long as they prepare themselves, they pay attention in class, and they use their teammates who maybe have that land navigation experience that they might not have. Study with them. The Sergeant Night Stalkers do not want you to fail. They want to push you and they want to challenge you, but at the end of the day, they want you to be the most successful Night Stalker, so they're not going to set you up for failure. We want to be self-sufficient in the environments that we serve in because generally we are not deployed to the locations that would have a robust footprint in theater. And we want to have the confidence and the skill set to get to an exfil location uh, to be extracted from an otherwise unfavorable situation if we find ourselves there.
So this morning, Enlisted Combat Skills Class 2104 Alpha Cell is nearing the end of their weapons week. They're in day four or five days of weapons training. Our weapons training starts in the classroom where we, we go over every single part of the weapon system. The first day on the range is primarily pistol just because we know many of the students have never shot a pistol before. We teach them how to clear weapons with ammo. We do simple drills, working our way towards transitioning weapon systems and working through combat-based scenarios with the weapon system. Most of the drills they're taught initially are single or two-shot drills. Um, part of that is building up to something we call gunfighter standards, which is a test out that they do at the end of the class. Half of ACEL this morning will start their day doing their test out on gunfighter standards. The other half will be shooting on the facade range. We've designed our range specifically to tailor to our mission set. We have ranges where you come out of aircraft. We have ranges where you shoot from aircraft. We have ranges where you shoot over cars. We have moving targets. So it's not just a steel range that you normally would get in the Army. So the facade shoot is uh, designed to kind of test the student's ability to both manipulate their weapon system around some obstacles, safely transition from location to location. They'll have to rotate their weapon to safe, take it to the high ready to move around another student who's bounding down the same facade. When it comes to firing the weapon systems, one cell of students will fire over 35,000 rounds in both weapon systems. We shoot until they get it right. We train to standard, not to time. So we will keep shooting until they get it right. It's stuff that most of us have never seen in the regular Army. I've already shot in the past three days more than I've shot my whole military career. We each had our own targets. So we've got tons of reps. I would say the quality of the training I've received here is hand down some of the best training I've received both in and out of the Army. Learn from the instructors. These guys are professionals. They're here for a reason. Some of them have had decades of experience. These guys know what they're doing and they will not hesitate to help you out if you need it. Today is a team building day for class 2104. Every class has theirs. Black Day now is referred to as Operation Pharaoh. The instructors start their day with a very um, kind of dynamic infill of some sort. Uh, today we were fortunate enough to get an airborne infill for the cadre. The day will generally kick off uh, with a PT event, just kind of get everybody in the right mind frame for the day, that it's going to be a challenging day, that any sort of lack of effort is not going to be tolerated throughout the day. And then it'll generally transition to a more team-oriented event where it's a kind of a collective task. But it'll be a combination of equipment carries, a given location to another location, um, trauma lanes. We will pause training and do a little corrective action on the spot for the whole team. Just you're only as strong as your weakest link. Kind of get them in that mentality of the reality of service in the regiment, which is we We've got a down aircraft in, in an Oconus environment and that mission is not over until that aircraft is recovered and all personnel are recovered. There's no slowing it down because you just finished something difficult. You know, as it says in our creed, when the impossible has been accomplished, the only reward is another mission no one else will try. As soon as they think they've, they've moved on to the next evolution of the day, there's another challenging obstacle in front of them that's going to force them to come together as a team. Enlisted Combat Skills Class 2104 are currently in their week of Night Stalker first responder training. We're teaching massive bleeding, how to control someone's airway, respirations, and then how to keep the patient warm and hypothermia management. They start with academics in the classroom, a brief overview of the training they'll do throughout the week. Every day is kind of summarized with a trauma lane based on the point in the curriculum they're at. Someone who's never done some of this stuff before might be very apprehensive to trust their training to get like a needle decompression or open an airway on somebody. With absolutely every medical treatment that you employ, there is a risk. Sticking a needle in someone's chest to treat attention in the thorax, there's, there's a potential risk with, with that. If you train hard and you place these interventions in the proper way, proper time, in the proper place, the benefit will outweigh the risk. We've resourced some very technologically advanced mannequins that, that do a lot of things that you really can't simulate on a person. So they go through a lot of repetitions of that, or, you know, just so they start to trust their instincts and, and revert to their training when those things happen. I'm constantly assessing how the students are grasping the information, and if they're grasping it to a level where we can go a little above and beyond, I, I love to go there. We try and impose a lot of stress on them, a lot of sim rounds, a lot of smoke, a lot of simulated gunfire, um, harsh terrain that they'll have to negotiate to move a casualty from the point of injury 
to a casualty collection point, it's all oriented towards saving someone's life. So being able to focus on the task at hand when there's a lot of other variables going on around you is probably the most challenging thing, both on our part to impose on them and on their part to overcome. We want every member of our unit to be able to respond in the event, either a member of the ground force, a member of our unit needs that treatment, that kind of critical life-saving steps to get them to a higher level of care. Because at the end of the day, all you're going to have is the people to the left and your right and having that skill set so that you can assist and depend on that person to your left and right is mean, vital. Bullets are random. There's, uh, there's a lot of things in combat that are completely unplanned and I take it very personally that these students that leave uh, most of combat skills, if they needed to provide aid to myself or one of my best friends, they would be able to do so. During this week's training, Alpha Cell of Enlisted Combat Skills Class 2104 have gone through their combatives certification. The events that will happen in here will range from cadre demonstrations, practical exercises, all the way through live rolling, essentially. The Army's combatives program is designed so that skill essentially outweighs speed, strength, all those things. They're having to rely exclusively on technique, and the ability to just overpower someone has been taken out of the equation. For someone who's never done it before, I was able to pick up quickly on a lot of the techniques and exercises that they were trying to teach us and train us up on, and it makes sense. They start you out with the basics and, and work up. We pretty commonly encounter soldiers have probably never had to pursue through strikes to the face, strikes to the body, someone trying to wrangle one of your extremities into a submission. So you've got to find your inner special operations warrior to get through it successfully. So the culmination exercise was the asylum. Pretty much you go into a couple rooms and then there are combatants inside those rooms. To execute their own tasks that they've learned in addition to working as a member of a team, so kind of trusting your battle buddy or your teammate to cover down on their sector of the room, their corner of the room. You have to deal with what's being presented in front of you and react to it. You don't know where they are, you don't know how the rooms are set up, and you're going in and you're trying to take the last five days of knowledge that you've received, put it together yeah. and make those crushers submit. They will be able to use their weapons while they're in there to keep yourself at projectile weapons range. You're going in and you have no idea what to expect, getting hit from either side, and it definitely makes you have to use every technique and tactic that you were taught and put it into effect. Okay, so today, students of Enlisted Combat Skills Class 2104 are going through their culminating exercise, Collect for short. They will execute every skill taught during Enlisted Combat Skills, so they'll go from having to assess a casualty and move them to a casualty collection point and ultimately exhale to a suitable HLZ, call in the nine-line medevac. They'll have to um, do room clearing procedures, close quarters combat, essentially executing the combative skills taught. They'll have to do some land navigation taught during that week. They will come here to the range and execute some of their advanced weapons disciplines taught during weapons week. In addition to testing all the skills taught in illicit combat skills, it's also um, it's a fun day for them. They do enjoy it. They get to operate as a team. They're, today they're in teams of about 14 each. The hope is that the students see their individual successes result in team success. Um, and hopefully what they gain from that is their experience in the regiment is going to be very much that. You're going to deploy in small task force elements where, you know, it may not be the person from your shop or your flight line or your company that you work with every day. Everyone's trained to the same level, so you should all be able to function as a team even if it's a whole new group of people. Today is the graduation day for Enlisted Combat Skills Class 2104. Um, of the 120 plus students who initially assessed for class, 84 graduating today. You know, the students are excited about it. It'll be the first day they get to officially don their berets, uh, which is a significant thing for them, you know, kind of signifying that, that crossing that threshold into the special operations community into an elite airborne unit. You have everything it takes to be successful. Be a sponge. Never stop learning, never stop growing, never accept where you're at is enough. I was 
told a long time ago that if you don't challenge yourself every day, then what's the point in living? If it was easy, everyone would do it. And there's a reason why it's not so easy. If you're thinking about doing it, just drop the packet and do it. You're never going to be able to experience it any other way. And the worst thing you can live with is regret. Definitely going to be a challenge, but it'll absolutely be rewarding at the end of the day. But then it's not till you are at that last leg, it's 1800, you're ready to go home, they yell, hit the pit. I can go one more time in the pit, I'll be all right. And that one more time becomes two more times, becomes 1900, becomes the next day. Always remember your why. It will get you through your hard days and through the hard nights and when you miss family and friends. Being able to put the beret on and knowing what it means, means the world, and knowing that individuals gave their lives for the regiment to be where it's at now. So from here on out, Whatever I'm doing, I'm doing for them. I've just always wanted to be a part of something like that. I look at all these individuals that I've gone through the last month with as a family, and I would trust all of them with my life. I serve with every pride those who come for me. They love to fight, love to win.